It is the turn of the last century, and now the wild pug is facing its toughest competition, the green mill. Fearing the growing popularity of his neighbor to the south, wild pug mixologist Olaf Silms fought back the only way he knew how, by distilling a potentially lethal and certifiably hallucinogenic elixir he came to call Malort. In this never-before-seen footage, an ancient Olaf reveals the Malort still he created in the basement of the Wild Pug. The effects of Malort were terrifying. Thousands of Chicagoans were stricken blind. Husbands left their wives. Children starved in the streets. And the dead were said to rise from their very graves. Although Carrie Nation, the leader of the Women's Christian Temperance Union, was in Kansas fighting the scourge that is White Lightning, Chicago's Wild Pug would soon face its own advocate for abstinence, Sister Mary Monistat. This trailblazing teetotaler and her army of believers soon became too much for the owners of the Wild Pug. With a brief kiss farewell from co-owner Steve Milford, Brian Wells of the Wild Pug was forced to temporarily flee his beloved bar, barely escaping with his own life. With the passage of the Volstead Act and the ratification of the 18th Amendment, the denizens of the Wild Pug simply went underground. Serving up bathtub gin and bootleg rye, the Wild Pug would earn its reputation as being Chicago's premier hotbed of vice and iniquity. Through the years, the Wild Pug has been no stranger to controversy. Its prose, poetry, and pints reading series which featured the likes of Howell author Allen Ginsberg and the author of The Naked Lunch, William S. Burroughs, led to some of the most fierce book burnings in the city of Chicago. Equally as significant and controversial was Wild Pug's launching of its acoustic concert series, Unpugged, where the sight of a nearly naked Stephen Leonard was responsible for the deaths of nearly half a dozen gay men. No less of a rock luminary than Janis Joplin said of Stephen Leonard, he has the biggest cock and the best voice of any man I've ever known. But if I could have said no, I would have, I would have fought to shoot you down. And who can forget Mr. Bill, who introduced a singing style that would later become known as karaoke. After being exported from the wild pug all the way around the world to Japan, the emperor Hirohito was said to be so enraged by the introduction of karaoke that he ordered his pilots to attack Pearl Harbor. And in what is perhaps the cruelest twist of fate, history has forgotten that it was the wild pug in Chicago, and not the Stonewall Inn in New York City, that was the birthplace of the modern gay rights movement. In the summer of 1968, the wild pug sponsored lesbian softball team, the Eager Beavers, licked their crosstown rivals, and returned to the pug to celebrate. Things soon got out of hand, and Mayor Richard J. Daley ordered a raid on the bar. It was a decision that would shake Chicago to its very core and change the modern gay rights movement forever.
nothing at the Wild Pug would ever be the same.